AQA, A-level physics, astrophysics, uh, eighth video on astrophysics, and this is about spectral classes, basically different types of star. That's what this is. Now, when things get hot, for example, uh, metal, now metal, when it gets hot, will give off lots of infrared, but if it's hot enough, it'll also start to give off visible light as well. Now, think about this. Very hot things emit visible light. Does the color give us any indication of how hot they are? Now, look at the photographs above. Uh, you can imagine it's starting to glow red, uh, and then it gets kind of orange. And then ooh, we look at ooh, a bit yellow, and then white. It's white hot. And then beyond white hot, a bit of blue coming in and then blue. So these colors here will give us an indication of how hot the temperature of this piece of metal. OK. Now, look at these stars. Stars have different colors as well. Now, yeah, there are a lot of stars which are white, but there's also whitish blue, blue. There's reddish, there's orangish. Um, and one reason why is because they have different temperatures. Uh, our eyes, as I think I mentioned in an earlier video, in the dark, when it's very dark, we only see black and white. So when you go out at night, most of the stars will just look white. But if you start taking digital photographs, you'll see that stars are actually lots of different colors. And the main reason why is because they have different temperatures. And one reason for that is because they're at different stages in their life cycle, which I'll talk about a bit more in the next video. Now, the different kinds of star, they have been classified. Now, O, B, A, F, G, K, M. That seems a little bit weird. It actually started off as A, B, C, D, E, F, G kind of thing. <clears throat> but then new types of star were discovered. Uh, and then it was realized, oh, that one should be there and that one should be there. And it's been jiggled around with quite a bit. And what we have now is this system here, O, B, A, F, G, K, M. Uh, to remember it, the classic way of remembering it, oh, be a fine girl, kiss me. Remember that, oh, be a fine girl, kiss me. They are the different types of star. And they are classified in this order by temperature. So the hottest is O. Uh, for example, blue giants and blue supergiants are very, very hot stars, and they are type O. The coolest stars uh, are the kind of around your red giants, and that's class M. So we go from the, the blue, very, very hot stars down to the red, uh, much cooler stars. Our sun is actually type G. There are subclasses in there as well, given different numbers. I, I believe our sun is a G3 or a G4. I think it's a G3. But remember, oh, be a fine girl, kiss me. And that's from hottest to coolest. Now look at this table. When you first look at this table, it probably gives you a bit of a nosebleed. Yeah. Do you need to learn this? Well, it's not actually as bad as you might think. Let's have a look at it. So on the left, we've got the spectral class, which is the, oh, be a fine girl, kiss me. Uh, and that goes from uh, the hottest down to the coolest. And look at the colors, the intrinsic color, what it appears to be. Um, and that kind of matches when I was talking about the temperature of metals at different temperatures. You know, that matches that, doesn't it? Yeah, the coolest one, M, is red. And then going up, it's red, orange, yellow, white, white, blue, white, blue, blue, etc. Our sun is a yellow white star. OK, so you've got the oh, be a fine girl, kiss me, the colors. That's not too difficult to remember. Now, the temperatures, what I suggest you learn, if you want to learn them all, great. But as a minimum, 
learn that the hottest stars, the very, very hottest stars on the surface, 50,000 Kelvin. OK, so your blue giants, their surface temperature goes up to about 50,000 Kelvin. Inside, you're talking millions of Kelvin, but on the surface, 50,000 Kelvin. Uh, the coolest stars, red giants, about three and a half thousand Kelvin. OK, some of them a bit less than that. You're talking about three and a half thousand Kelvin. Uh, our sun surface temperature, about five thousand seven hundred Kelvin. So just learn those three temperatures to start with. If you get a question on this, it'll be like one of these long answer questions for six marks. Uh, and if you can, amongst other things, come up with these temperatures, that will get you a couple of marks. So we've got the spectral class, we've got the color, we've got the temperature. What's this thing on the right then? Well, a star has got several outer layers. OK, you've got inner layers and you've got outer layers. Uh, you've got the photosphere and the chromosphere and the corona. The one I'm interested in here is called the chromosphere. Now, the chromosphere absorbs some of the light that comes from the photosphere. So it absorbs some of the light and we end up with an absorption spectrum, which you should remember what that is from earlier in the course. You looked at the, the hydrogen uh, emission and absorption spectra, yes, earlier on in the course, when atoms get excited. And if you look at the lines in this spectrum, that tells you basically the composition yeah, of the outer layers. It tells you what elements are present in the outer layers. If you look at the spectrum, you'll see that there's dips in the spectrum and they would appear as like dark lines in the spectrum, an absorption spectrum. Now, having said that, let's go and look at this. Can we see any pattern here? In the very, very hot stars, we've got ionized helium. Notice that doesn't appear anywhere else. I mean, all of them will have loads of hydrogen and helium. They are stars. That's what happens in a star. Hydrogen turns into helium, okay, in the core. So all have got hydrogen and helium, but in the very, very hot ones, we've got ionized helium. That's interesting. Uh, in these middle ones, lower down as it gets cooler, ionized metals. So we see metals appearing, okay? Uh, and as it gets cooler, we actually see neutral metals. It's cool enough for, so that it's not a complete everything ionized. You know, we've actually got atoms there, neutral metals. And in the coolest one, uh, titanium oxide, we have a compound. It's actually cool enough to have a stable compound, titanium oxide. So if you think about it, you know, this isn't just random. You can actually relate what elements are there uh, to the temperature, all the way from very, very hot ionized helium down to actually being cool enough to have a compound there. We're talking visible light. And because it's visible light, I'm not going to dwell on this. We're talking the Barmer spectrum, but just the visible lines. OK, so not the lime and not the passion, the visible lines, which correspond to a drop or uh, an excitation from N equals two. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and look at your um, hydrogen spectrum. Yeah, it's the Barmer series uh, it mentions just for hydrogen. Keep it simple and involving n equals two 